Uh, it, it always gets edited. Yeah, my, my assistant edits everything, so well, no matter what. Right. What's up, Nick? How you feeling, man? I am blessed, to say yeah. the least. There you go. That's, That's it. it. Woo. How you feeling, How you man? Feel? I'm feeling good, good, man. I'm a little warm, man. A little warm in here. It's getting <laughs> hot just in Fresno, period. It's, it's hot. hot. The, the weather just was so crazy lately, bro. Like, so wait, are we going to start complaining about it's hot, huh? Yeah. You know, that's, that's how it happens. That's crazy. Like, First, just last week, it was rainy and cold. <laughs> now it's hot. Like, I was like, man, right. I'm tired of this flood, man. You don't man. get no, like, little, hey, it's going to be good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. It's like, it's it was hot. Right. It just went from one extreme to the other extreme. That's the thing with Fresno is, like, sometimes it's, it's just extreme. It's like, there's no... Did we even get a real spring? Well, this is spring now. It's just spring not even, I'm sure it'll cool down but, for a little bit, and then. But the get... crazy part, it's not. I don't think it's hot, hot. It's not. It's just yeah, not like right. Fresno hot. Right. Mm-hmm. It's hotter than it was. That's what it is. Yeah, three months from now, we, yeah. we're gonna be and, hoping for this temperature back. And I think psychologically, exactly. This is this yeah. year has rained more than ever. In ever year. crazy. So I think we're coming off of that, and now it's warmer. It's maybe 75, 80. It's just a complete transition, like a How does that even work, right? We was in a drought. Are we still in a drought then? Is that I don't mean? think so. No. I think there are parts of California that are like percentage wise, they're right. still, you know, they could use some more water. I've but, even uh, heard this though, which is crazy. I don't know much how the water works, but someone had mentioned that even though we got all that rain, mm. it's not being, I guess, captured, captured. correctly for mm. to even con- be considered. But I really don't know how that works. I, I won't even speak to that. I, I would, yeah, yeah. I'm gonna <laughs> go back because you I know would. what all the rain and the flood did do though. What it what? created many counties here in California that are. Um, that were deemed natural disaster areas, mm. so you don't have to file taxes until October. I heard that my tax. I guy definitely told me heard that. about that. Yeah, so I was. That's like, crazy. Oh, yeah. Got a relief. Yeah, that's yeah. Crazy. I was like, oh man, tax. Dude. And then like, the like harvest the of certain like fruits and things of that nature would be like kind of pushed off. Too. Yeah, right. Because yeah. of all the rain, and all of it. That's yeah, crazy. Too much. and Florida's looking crazy too right now. Mm. Goodness gracious, they're underwater. Like, did you see Florida no, pictures? I have not. What underwater? Well, they show. I saw some video of the airport. It looks like it's an ocean, like literally, like it looked crazy, like how flooded and it was the airport. So Jeez. I personally would I, never have... live on a peninsula surrounded by three bodies. Yeah. I would never do that. But uh, three bodies. Of... But I hope everyone's all right. right. Out there. But yeah, you're I would right. move. If Shout I was you, I'd move. Florida. Shout out man. to Florida for sure. But it just shows, man, um, global warming is real, I guess, you know, like for real, like we're getting mm-hmm. some extreme weather patterns lately. It just and then there was a bunch of tornadoes in the Midwest recently, a couple of weeks ago. Right. Wasn't there a tornado one in L.A.? In- there was in one in California. LA. LA. Yeah, one in LA. Sure. When have we ever had tornadoes in California? Yeah, yeah, yeah. In that so one that, movie, that end of the world movie? Ooh, well, 2012. 2012, yep. That's a whole nother podcast. That it's like, <laughs> it's, we can go down a whole rabbit hole on. I mean, you know, but yeah, a lot of things are lining up, and for, you know, depending how you look at it and your mm-hmm. beliefs, but uh, I'm a believer. So I think it's, it's a blessing in good times. We're going to witness something other generations are probably would never witness but wow. yeah Absolutely. that's another podcast guys lucky us so I don't lucky know. us yeah lucky us and another reason is a little warm in here because i'm wearing a sweatshirt what does that sweatshirt say man so the reason i had to wear the sweatshirt today today guys if you read it it says troy center right there you go what is that rich and we probably mentioned a few times uh before a podcast i think we have i think we have shouted you out nick we have we have yeah we have but go, so. but go ahead and, and, and let so, them know what it is so welcome to the heat speakers today. guys welcome again another fire episode we have an amazing guest today like me and mark have been talking about this for for a while and uh and very excited and honored that he's joining us today so he's his name is nick butler and let me just tell you guys he's running a, a youth foundation geared to un- underprivileged youth um, he's going to get into everything, but he's doing mm-hmm. amazing things in the community. Uh, me and Mark wholly support it. Uh, his company is called the Troy Center, and it's all about the youth. So we got Nick Butler on the show today, guys. Let's give him a little. Warm. Thanks for coming in, Nick. Thanks, no, thanks for coming in, man. Thanks for having me. I appreciate you. Man, we got a lot, a lot of questions for you about yeah, yeah, everything do you're it. doing. Um, before we jump into that, real quick, mm-hmm. Mark. Like we always do, we right. kind of give everyone a little update on what's happening in the real estate market rates. Let's jump into that real quick. Just a quick update. We're gonna then we're gonna just gonna jump right in. What's going Absolutely. on? Absolutely. Yeah. So where, yeah. What are we looking like? Uh, we're week? still pretty steady. Uh, conventional loans. We're still looking. You know, high sixes. Uh, FHA loans and government loans, mid sixes to uh, six point three seven five, somewhere around there. 
Uh, so, it's, I mean, we're still not in the best area, you know, for affordability for a lot of families here in town. Um, that there's been no talk of that uh that down payment assistance dream for all coming back Man, that came in left in what 12 days or something yeah 12 business days what uh i don't know if you know nick but they uh california put a put a program out where they were uh helping people down with 20 percent down on their first time home buyer wow. homes. Yeah. uh they they put aside 300 million dollars worth of funds to help families Jeez. it's gone in 11 days man. and i want to say it was around 11, 11 i believe days, it helped 2500 families if i'm not mistaken somewhere around it's estimated by about yeah. 2500 families based on how you know got, the 20 percent that they were putting down was going to help about 2500 sure. families and majority of them honestly were up north so yeah i heard like there was some 10 percent were like in sacramento or something like which that. is where all of these yeah. bills are passed and you know so there's there's been some a little bit of a little bit of heat as to as to who knew about it, who yeah. was prepared for it, who was ready to register and lock on March 27th. You know, so um, let's hope that that's not true because honestly, it was a great program, but um, you know, there was a limited amount of funds and that's gone. And unfortunately, there's nothing there that states is coming back. But uh, in the meantime, rates are still where they're at. Home prices are are stable. I don't see them dropping at all or crashing like a lot of people are assuming. Um, I mean, look at all the funds that just vanished in that dream for all program. Yeah. California's not worried about getting their money back, you sure. know, so they don't see a crash. They wouldn't be lending mm -hmm. out 300 million. Yeah. Uh, it wouldn't be gone in 11 days if nobody was buying. Very so true. I mean, so you look, look at, at the these as, as indicators it, yeah. and gauges as to the strength and uh, the, the trust yeah. and, that yeah. they have in, in the, the California housing market. So yeah. still, still get out there, talk to somebody, see what you're, what you're pre-approved for. If, if home ownership is a goal of yours in 2023, mm -hmm. And um and just see where you're at. Never a bad idea to just see where you're at. Yeah. And you guys know um there's a lot of other programs available. Uh you mm -hmm. may or may not be aware of, you know, down payment assistance. So like Mark said, we just I would just um I would just recommend you just reaching out to your mortgage professional, your loan officer, and uh, they can go over the different programs that are still available. So yeah. there is some things that can help you out, guys. So it's not quite all the way over. But, yeah. Uh, and and you know, just to get that education and educate you on what's what's available to you. Um, which ties in fantastic with Nick Butler here, who is just yes. delivering information and education to uh, to all of our our community youth. So, uh, yeah. Nick, welcome again, and uh, let's hear a little bit about your uh, your Troy Center, man. Yeah. Man, tell everybody. First and foremost, thank you for having me here. Today. Thanks for coming. And uh, the Troy Center, truly reviving our youth. Uh, that's the acronym, and we're here, uh, a nonprofit here in Fresno, California, CBO, community based organization to where we provide mentorship, uh, life skill coaching, tutoring, and just uh, uh, something that a lot of people may have, haven't heard of, which is credible messenger. You know, someone who's been there, done that, trying to teach these youth, our youth, you know, how to navigate through this thing that we call life, right? right? So we are a 501c3, and we've been in existence since 2017. And we yeah. just aim to 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 empower our youth and strengthen our community. That's so that's what thing. we're here to do. And that's really needed here, you know. Um, just does you know, let's 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 backtrack a little bit. Let's start a little bit let's from the it. beginning. Uh yeah. so yeah. you have a background prior to establishing full time in a Troy Center. Yeah, you did Absolutely. what? So prior to Troy Center being my full time job, which it is now. I was a, a correction officer at the juvenile justice campus mm. here in Fresno, California, where I um I saw some things that it was just like eye opening for me, right? And it reminded me of my childhood, mm. right? Okay. So we can go back even further than that. Troy and Troy Center was a friend of mine who got killed, right, wow. in St. Louis, Missouri, where I'm from. So, wow. so originally from St. Louis. I'm originally from St. Louis, Missouri. You've been in Fresno since what Ooh. year? 2000 2000 okay so, so you've been here yeah. for a while. yeah 23 years gotcha. 23 going on 24 years okay and uh yeah so to pay homage to troy um and doing what i love to do which is work with our youth uh we we uh, i came up with the troy center and like like oh, that's i was great, saying I didn't... yeah yeah so working with the 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 youth at the juvenile hall like i said was an eye opener for me and it kind of reminded me of what i came from mm, right? right a lot of those students those youth incarcerated they didn't have the 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 knowledge they didn't have the mm -hmm. experience they didn't have the exposure they didn't have the resources mm -hmm. to 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 make these decisions now some of them yeah they just made bad decisions and they you know need right. to do 
and, 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 you know, be accountable for their actions. Right. Sure. But a lot of them, they just weren't even given that, you know, opportunity to see outside of what we like to say, their three block radius. Mm. Mm. So what we do with the Troy center is uh, expose them to that. Right. So with my background at the juvenile hall and seeing some things that, you know, I would see something like a problem today and I would bring that problem up to my superiors. Right. Mm -hmm. But I wouldn't get the approval to make a change until maybe a year later. Mm -hmm. So it has to go up, but it has to come back down mm -hmm. in order to make or implement whatever that change is or, you know, that fixes. So with that, I was like, man, it's just, you're, I'm seeing it firsthand. Mm -hmm. And not that I can fix everything, but there was a fix there, but I couldn't do it until I got approval. So sometimes- If you I, even got that. If I got it. Right. Sure. Right? Right. So that was hard. Like I would literally take this stuff home with me mm. and it would be on my conscience and whatnot. And it was like, okay, what can we do? And I was already kind of doing Troy and Troy Center, but- what when when did now don't mean to cut you off no, okay. when did you think of the concept of creating a Troy Center? So you were already working at Juvenile Hall by at that no no time? no I was oh, this is it prior. was a thought. So Troy he passed away in two thousand, and then the thought came to me to to put something in play like this in two thousand four. Okay, and then the like I said we've been in existence as a five hundred one c three technically since two thousand seventeen. Wow. So we're talking about a 13 year span before mm -hmm. it really, really came to be what sure. people see it as today. To fruition. God. It, and it, in that 13 started, years, you had you were you had plenty trial of and error. Yeah. Plenty. And then plenty of uh, examples or yep. or red tape that you faced with at the juvenile hall that 100%. just kind of pushed you this way. And 100%. now you're full time. And honestly, and, not to cut you off, but no, no, it's probably kind of a blessing because it gave you time to actually work oh. with the youth absolutely in the system absolutely for that many years to get that experience to really gather everything that you, were, sure. you know to, to apply it to what you're doing now so i definitely want to make sure that this is no slight no knock to the jjc at all mm -hmm. right, yeah, right? Yeah, what yeah, it did yeah. is it groomed me to be in this position that i am in currently sure for sure right yeah. so obviously in that time span i was able to to pick up on some things see different things and, and learn and tone my skills to be able to then now take that leap of faith mm -hmm. and do what I'm currently doing. Yeah. So all shots out to to the JJC and everyone at the JJC for um, kind of helping me get to to the point that I'm at right now. So yes. um, I wouldn't change any of that, like if I could, you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, so yeah, yeah. I appreciate it. Yeah, for sure. And on that too, shouts out to them for, uh, uh, indirectly making this podcast happen because right. Rich, when did you start at the juvenile hall? Yeah, yeah. So, so just a history, guys. Uh, me and actually Nick, we I used to work pri previously at the juvenile hall. If you guys don't know, and then that's where we met, and then he's went on from there and done amazing things after that. But yeah, I started in two thousand one until uh, and then I left in twenty seventeen January. Oh, one to seventeen, you yes. were. So I had two stints at the JJC, okay. 07, and then I came back in 12, and then I just recently resigned um, in 2022, back in December. And I was there 2011 to 2013. So this is actually where we all know each other from, and now it's come full circle to this episode here. It's so a it's, a gr it's a crazy thing how life works. Crazy man. thing. Life, right. Like there's no mistakes in life. Everything's for a reason. Um, I just, I will just say everyone, just um, everyone you come in contact with, mm. just, yep. just understand that it's a reason and try to get all you can from every interaction, every contact you have. Yeah. Um, Cause every, really every contact is a learning experience. You can learn good or bad from in every person you meet, but there is also a higher, a bigger reason. So just I believe it. always keep that in mind. Um, you may not know what it is at first, but you know, years from now, years from then you may it may come full circle. So just absolutely that's important. But, but I, uh, Nick, yeah. talk about the transition. Cause I know that had to be pretty hard from working at juvenile hall and you just weren't a, just a, a regular correction officer, right? You actually worked your way up. Yeah. I worked my way up the ranks. I uh, started as a per diem, which is like part-time. Mm -hmm. part -time. Then I, um, got full-time and I was full-time for not even a whole year before I promoted to a senior. Wow. And then once I became a senior, I was in that position for approximately three, four years, maybe. Mm -hmm. And then I promoted to supervisor where I was there for uh, almost five years. 
Wow. Yeah. Wow. So I was yeah, at the juvenile yeah. for almost 11 years in total. Wow. And so, you know, that, and that's one of the things I want to take my hat off to the JJC for kind of grooming me mm -hmm. to be in this position because sure. I, I saw a lot when I promoted to supervisor. Mm. I saw a lot. The and other side. Huh? I saw the other side, which was like an eye opener for me. Because once again, my passion is the youth. Mm -hmm. And, you know, when you promote up, you tend to work with a lot of the staff and you do a lot of staff issues. Right. And so, you know, I wasn't doing what I was passionate about on a daily mm -hmm. when it comes to like working with the youth because right. I was dealing more with the staff. Mm -hmm. But, yeah, I definitely worked my way up. Um, and it was a, a learning experience and something that I wouldn't turn in or trade in, I should say. For anything because it was a, a life lesson to help me mm -hmm. where i am currently yeah for sure you built your skills up to, yep. to the position you are now so let's talk about that that <laughs> that transition. transition like i know it had to be scary at least for myself you know mm -hmm. when i left there you know going full-time january 17 it was just like whoa you know i'm leaving a job and mind you i've been working a regular job uh my whole life like getting paid every two weeks you mm -hmm. know like that now you I just took a leap of faith January 17. Uh, it, I mean, I was excited. I was happy, but it was a little bit scary because I went because the day after I left, um, I wake up. I'm like, man, I'm not I don't really I have a job, but I don't. And I'm not guaranteed a check in two weeks. Oh, yeah. So that right there really for me, it put me it made me just in and in, um, in go mode. It just like it felt like my back was against the wall mm -hmm. and I just went overdrive. Like I'm just doing yeah, everything yeah. I can just to make sure that I'm going to make a living out of this mm -hmm. and to bring some income in and, and you know, and continue doing what I love, but actually making money. So right. what was the mindset? Like when did it first hit you? Like, OK, I'm going to work my way out and then kind of talk about the transition of your like leaving. How Man, did that feel? The transition was like scary. Yeah. Crazy. Like, like the unknown. Mm. Right. Cause like you said, every two weeks, like clockwork, you knew you was getting a check. Yeah. And so, you know, having those conversations with the family, trying to figure out, Hey, is this something that we can do? Um, and fortunately we were the Troy center that is, was we were in a school to where we had got our first contract. Mm. Right. So knowing that we had this contract and, and just keep in mind, this contract is only for a year. Mm -hmm. You have to re renew. We have to do it. And so right now, even it's one of those things where it's like, still it's kind of scary, like territory. Sure. Um, it's just one of those things though. Um, taking that gamble on self, I yeah. know where my passion lies. I know where my heart lies. And I know that what I'm trying to do in the world is, is it's like something that, is definitely needed. Mm -hmm. And so being comfortable with that two week check, but coming home and not really, you know, enjoying what you're doing anymore because you're not doing what you're passionate about. Mm. That kind of, you know, led me in this direction as well, but it definitely was scary because I do have a family that I have to support and um, provide for, but being able to get that first contract and seeing that people believe and what we're doing mm -hmm. at right. the Troy Center. Right. Someone believes in what we're doing to where they put money behind it. Mm -hmm. That part alone was like, okay, it makes sense. So then now you said something earlier, Rich, was that your back was against the wall. Yeah. For whatever reason, um, when my back is against the wall, that's just when I go hard. Like yeah. it's, And what I'm trying to learn and teach myself now is to do that without my back being against the wall. Mm -hmm. But leaving a job that I was getting a check every two weeks on and, and things of that nature, my back is now against the wall. So I got, I got to come out fighting. Right. There's no so option. I, there's, no option. there's no option. Yeah. Right. And mm -hmm. that's where we are right now. Right. So to see that, that first and shout out to Violet Hines, VHEA, um, all the staff over there, everyone that was, you know, instrumental in making this situation happen. Thank you from the bottom of my heart and my staff too. So, you know, having that support and knowing and that belief, and us made it a little more easier, but at the same time, me knowing and following my gut, mm -hmm. my heart, my passion was something that was like inevitable because it was inevitable mm -hmm. to, to yeah. es especially working my way up yeah. the ranks at the JJC and seeing certain things sure. that didn't sit well with me. Right. It was like, okay, something got to come of this. Mm -hmm. And so I'm going to take what I learned here, apply it here, but even make it even that much more better. 
That's amazing. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's your true calling, man. That no, was yeah, it. For sure. you can it. clearly tell. I mean, that I mean, the money that you're talking about or the support that you're getting from the different individuals and companies are is clearly coming from your passion being on display. Because if you don't believe in yourself, nobody else is going nobody to. Nobody will. So that's almost like validation that you know what what I am putting out there is real. Yeah, it is making a change Absolutely. because other people. They're catching on and they're falling in line. Right. And uh, and I think that's great, man. Um, well, have you have you noticed um, maybe a different level of um, of effective change that you can have now from your position from one or the other? Because I know you were speaking about a lot of red tape. <laughs> or have you experienced yeah. like, yes, this was the move? So listen, one of the policies that we had at the JJC that I wish I could have changed before I left was the fact that you cannot be in contact with the youth once they are out of custody. Mm. okay yeah okay okay it's a policy yeah and due to whatever reason hey i'm not here to speak on that but it's a policy so now where i'm at youth someone can call my phone like a student can call me because i'm a mentor yeah and guess what they need that around the clock support absolutely like they, that's you can't how you just, really change it touch exactly. their lives exactly you can't just do it from eight to five and then it's done yeah no, you got to be able to like, if someone called me at 10 o'clock and it's really a severe situation, they may need some guidance. It's not that they need me to come to their aid in person. They may, they may just need someone to talk, talk to. to. Right, right. hundred percent. To, to, to walk them off that bridge to where they could do something severe to themselves or someone else. Yeah. Right? right. So at the juvenile hall, that was a really a strength. I was strangled on that. Like I was held to that to where once they leave custody, so Someone could be in custody up to 365 days, a mm -hmm. whole year. Mm -hmm. All they know is, hey, Butler, what's going on? Da, 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 da. They're looking for Butler or whoever to come in. As soon as they leave that day, no more communication with That's them. It. Yeah. Well, now with the Troy Center being in the community, hey, little Johnny, you need what? Okay. Right. We're, we're, we're here now at the school, but now when you leave the school, you can still mm. reach out to me mm. if you need help. Yeah. Because problems come up at any all time. All the time. At any time. Yeah. Especially the youth that we work with. Right. Right. So that's the biggest, the biggest. That's huge, man. Really thing That's huge. For me now being with the Troy Center 100%, we are a community based organization. Yeah. We're not just at the juvenile hall, which we are there too, still in some capacity. Sure. Mm -hmm. Um, but we are the Troy Center to where now, if you need me, little Johnny, reach out. Yes. Reach out to one of the staff and let us know. And however we can help you, we will. Yeah. So that's, that's, why I that's love the it biggest so part. much, man. And it's, it's real about the, the title, Truly Reviving Our truly Youth. Reviving our and youth. the only way you can do that is hands-on, direct contact. Yeah. Um, you know, when they're going through something, they can reach out. It's almost, you know, there's a boys and girls club, but at the same time, this is along those lines but i, it I feel is, like it, sure. it goes even a step farther it can be in, in the growth it, the capacity it has but um no, i appreciate that but that it, it it's amazing man I, I like i said this may be one of our uh, most important shows to be honest guys because like what you're doing um is very needed especially here in fresno and i'm sure across other areas but um yeah yeah it just it's very needed right now you know the kids. yeah and I, I think it, it may not it may or may not be felt you know through through the screen or while we're doing this podcast right. but it's um it's incredible to see what you the people that actually know you on a real personal level sure. to see what you've given up to pursue this mm. um for people that you haven't even met yet you know right. for for youth that you have you don't even know yet right you don't they you don't even know that they need you right but you left a job that you were rising at um, that you were safe and secure at. Safe. Yeah. You got a family no of your own. Uh, I mean, to to pursue this, man, and that's it's, that's just not something a lot of people. It do. just shows the dedication. That's, I think that's great. You know, he's leaving a awesome. top position, almost. You know, a right. supervisor right. to leave to go out on his own uh, for the youth because he felt like you know he can really change their lives by you know his foundation personally. And I lo love that. Uh, real quick, let's talk about this. So, your last day. OK, um, and now you're going. So your last day happens. Talk about the first day you wake up. You're no longer at the JJC. It's all Troy <laughs> Center, full steam. What are your what's going through your mind then? And what are your thoughts, your plans? So just keep this in mind. At the JJC, I was 4 p.m. to 12 a.m. Mm -hmm. So my schedule was off. Wow. Right. Just that first and foremost, that was just like a, a little mental like uh, play on it when I have to wake up now at 6 30 
ah, a.m. Yeah. Mm-hmm. to be at the school site by sure. 8, 830. Yeah. Right. So just that alone. And then just the, the so keep in mind, I know you both know. So for those of you all out there, even as a correctional officer, like it, it's kind of like you're locked up too. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, yes, we get to go home. I get it. Right. I get it. Yes, we get to go home. But that mentality, mm-hmm. like always on edge, ready for something to pop off, ready mm-hmm. for like, and I would bring that home. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So then now I no longer have that to where like, it's like, whoa, wait. Yeah. That loud noise wasn't a fight finna pop off. Like, the chairs, like chair the scooting, chairs moving. Yeah. Chair scooting. Oh like, man. Like, it's okay. Took me some time. Like, yeah. Took me some time. Which is moving real quick and I ain't got to worry about that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like, um, at the school site that we're at now, like, the, the infractions or the little the things that we have happen there, I compare them to like the JJC and it's like, wow, that's what we really, that's what we worried about. Mm-hmm. Right. Uh, but that first day, man, was just like, man, hold on. Like I'm at home at five o'clock with my kids. Mm. Is the, and that was another caveat to this. Like the time, like, you know, at the JJC, you could work a couple of doubles or whatever oh, because easily. You're, gonna, you're not going you're not guaranteed to go home after an eight-hour shift 16 yeah, yeah. yeah you can right. say 16 easily that mando almost, yeah, right? Yeah, right right so when you're doing that that takes away from your family it really does like my son is six now i missed out on like the first like five years of his life mm-hmm. like being at work trying to provide for him yeah right. so that part of it is something like hold on i'm at home i get to play like wait <laughs> you take a shower or a bath, which one does it? Because I don't know. Because yeah. I've never been here right. to do that with you. Right. right. So that first day, I get to come home like, Daddy, you, you home? Like, yeah, I'm here. Like, <laughs> when you, you going, no, I'm here. Like, this is the, the schedule now. Right. Right. So that part of it was like eye opening for me and like strange. And it's still something I'm trying to get used to. And your kids are young, so they need you now more than ever. Six, and my daughter would be two. On the nineteenth yeah. of this month, actually, they need to see daddy a lot more. You know, it's, it's, these are the pivotal parts and moments in their lives to where we're not sitting here years from now trying to truly revive yeah. them. Correct. Wow, yes. you see what I'm saying? Yes. Yeah. So please, please understand that those are like, like my inspirations and things of that nature. Like to 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 make sure that you know, not only do they have things that I didn't, but they know stuff that I didn't know mm-hmm. when I was their age. Oh man. So. I mean, that's my whole spiel with like the first day and just being able to be home with them and just changing my whole schedule and like my whole like little yeah. way of life. Yeah. yeah. So there were benefits from the jump. Obviously, like you said earlier, that you it was a little scary to do, mm-hmm. but there were benefits from the jump from that, the gate that made that made it okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. I think I can do this. <laughs> I, I I think I made the right choice. You know. Yeah. So and I know you're still early in the transition. Still but early. Not do your kids do your kids go to any of your guys' outside events? Probably not the school, you know, where you guys are at daily because you know the school's going on. But right. any of the events you throw on, do you, you take the you take the children with you, the whole family? That's they awesome. Out, they come out. So they know. As what's a matter up. Of, matter of fact, shameless plug, we got our kickball yeah. tournament coming up uh May sixth. May sixth. So this is our fourth annual. And my kids will definitely be out there and uh, they get to come out and, and, you know, enjoy the festivities. Where's it at? Let, let's it's talk be about at McLean High School. This McLean year. High School. And let, second year in a row. Let's talk. That's another thing I've noticed he's doing a lot. Uh, even the last couple of years, you've been doing several different events. You know, yeah. you're bringing out, you know, you're doing kickball events for the youth. You're mm-hmm. bringing out. Actually, you have some, I believe, athletes uh, or or former right. athletes involved in your and what Absolutely. you're doing. Uh, you've even brought out an artist yep. to one of your events. Talk a little bit about the events you th- you've done for the kids and all that. So and you have the radio behind you too, I believe. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So before Troy Center was a hundred percent, you know, my, you know, job, if you will, it was always my job. But in an, in the beginning, all we would do were like little uh, events, like our kickball tournament. Um, just to get people to, you know, acclimated to what we're doing yeah. in the community. Um, backpack giveaways, um, taking our youth to different like events, sporting events, whether it's boxing, basketball games at Fresno State. Mm-hmm. Um, and me myself having a sports background, you know, the the relationships that I've been able to establish while being here for 20 plus years has been instrumental, like in and really beneficial to what we're doing at the Troy Center. Mm -hmm. To where um, last year at our kickball tournament, we were able to bring out La Russell. Ah, one of my favorites, yeah. I mean, he was at the kickball tournament? Yeah, he he performed 
uh, a good like 30, 45 minute set. Really? Yeah. Oh, he man. Came out I thought I told uh, you that. I, I wanted to go. I had a listing appointment the same day. Yeah. And now that I look back, I should have went because uh, I didn't get the listing, but just. Now, uh, <laughs> I, kinda, I know I said sports and I went straight to La Russell. Sure. That's solely social media. Yeah. Reaching out. And he's a real one because reaching out to him via social media, he responded. That's a blood. Yeah. And then it was on from there to where. We tried to bring him out this year. He was busy, but we're trying to bring someone else out. That's just we want we're gonna keep that in the tuck right now. Look out but, for it. Um Russell came out to bless the, the 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 people in attendance with his uh lyrical genius, if you will. Mm -hmm. Um and Quincy Pondexter is a like a little brother to me. So he's uh That's dope. in my opinion, like a Fresno legend. Yep, yep. Um we had a Juju, which is Greg Smith, um okay. Kenny Wiggins. Over there at uh, what is that? Mayweather Boxing. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So it's crazy because yeah. I met Kenny at the kickball tournament last year, and then he actually came to speak to some of our students at Violet Hines. V H E A. Shout That's out awesome. to y'all. And um, he gave all of them the opportunity to come and just check out, you know, the boxing workout at Mayweather Boxing over there in Clovis. So yeah, we had a you know a great turnout, and then um. This year will be even bigger and better for mm -hmm. sure. I know you got a lot of things going on. Uh, yeah, speaking we do. of this one, you just so this is a kickball for a cause. Kick it for a cause. Kicking for a cause. Um, one of our things is it's like a one of our many fundraisers. One of the things that I've I found out in the last few years is transportation mm. is so difficult for our youth. Wow. Right. I didn't even think about that. Yeah, it's big transportation mm. just getting them to and from mm. so what we want to do is raise funds for our troy in motion which is a mobile resource center right wow so okay we call ourselves mobile mentors mm. to where we're looking to to buy an old bus and gut it out and put like standing desk in there and then have wi-fi computers, uh, iPads. Wow, that's business. incredible, man. That's, that's revolutionary. Incredible. That's different. Yeah. And what we'll do with Troy in Motion is we'll meet the youth where they are. Like right. we go out to them. So we can alleviate that transportation issue by providing our services to them where they are. Mm -hmm. mm, right. I love it. Love so it. part of our uh fundraising for our um ticket for a cost this year will definitely go to that. We're trying to get funding for that. Um, Cause everything like one of my good friends, Joshua Allen, he's on our board. He told me this a long time ago. He said, there are a lot of people who have money, but they don't necessarily have the time. Mm -hmm. Right. Well, we don't necessarily have the money, but guess what? We have the time right. to invest in these youth. Mm -hmm. So what we want to do is bring those people together to see what we're doing and know that it's real. Yes. And that it's not a facade. And what we're doing is, is beneficial to not just our youth, but the community as a whole. As a whole. What Real quick, we're going to say this again, guys. But real quick, what's the website? Just in case someone's watching and they just want to go to the website right now. TroyCenter.org. TroyCenter.org, guys. Troy just Center. so you know, we're going to announce it again at the end. But, yep. you know, someone just like wants to help out, benefit to the great cause, TroyCenter.org. I love it. Yeah. 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 Um, That's fantastic, man. So uh, we hear a little bit about what you got going on now. Uh, you know, some some goals you have for you know the immediate or maybe short term future. Mm -hmm. What's what's the long term? Where do you see this going, man? Is this is this statewide? Is this nationwide? Or what? It's, what? It's, what's wow. what's, the, what's the goal, man? Yeah. So so those of you all who do know me or you don't, I'm gonna tell you now. Um, I'm originally from St. Louis, Missouri, like we talked about. So we definitely want to have and will have. A choice. I like that. Will have in St. Louis, Missouri. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then I came to Fresno by way of San Diego. Okay. So we'll definitely have one in San Diego, but nationwide, definitely at some point. Nice. The three year goal is to have our own building. Like, so we do want to do Troy in Motion with our mobile resource center. Right. But we will have a, a building right now um, that we're looking into. Yeah. We, I don't know if we get into that or not, but we'd sure. love to, 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 to have our standalone building to where students can get to us or our youth can get to us safe place here. safe place safe place safe for them place. too you know what i mean right and then, like i said it's not just beneficial to our youth but it's to the community to as the a com whole right right and then the long term is i mean why not open up charter school 
Why not? Why not? Why not? You know what I mean? I, I want to I, I, I want to hear a little bit about your vision for the community center. So Ooh. we get the building here. I know yeah. where, where you're looking, you know, yeah. downtown. Downtown. Say you got the building. What Stuff is Park. your vision for that center? The vision for that is, especially in the location, 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 downtown Fresno, to have a place where our youth can come and be their authentic selves, right? They're not judged. They're not um, put into a, a box. They're not, you know, told that they need to think a certain way either, right? What we want to do is have a place for them to come to where we do case management, i.e., like we got that from the JJC. Mm -hmm. Yeah, case thinking for a change. Yeah. Thinking yeah. for a change is something yeah. that I'm a big advocate for. Mm -hmm. However, in, a, in a, the dynamics in which it's being taught, could it be different? Maybe. Sure. Is that the Troy Center? 100%. Yeah. Because that's what we're dedicated to. It's got to be relatable to the kids. And, and you have to be. So the thing with the with the center is you build a place where a kid can be themselves. Guess what they're going to do? They're going to let down that barrier. Mm -hmm. They're going to let you now come in and teach because until they can trust you, there's no real teachings that can be done. Right. So at our center, you come in and be who you are. You're rich. You're a mark. Be who you are. No judgment. No judgment. Right. And then now you see that as real. So then now you let down that guard that you got up. So then now we can kind of teach you like, hey, what you've been doing, it ain't been working probably. Mm -hmm. right? right. And not only do that, but show them examples. Get them exposure. Get them to a place where they, you know, can are comfortable with first and foremost self themselves. And so at our, our center, we will definitely implement those things. And, um, you know, give them the life tools and skills that they need to be successful. Mm -hmm. um, the hierarchy of needs, right? Maslow's hierarchy of needs. The basic needs aren't being met. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. if you need a meal, shout out to the Central California Food Bank, who, you know, we're trying to establish a partnership with as well. Okay, if we don't have that the choice, then guess what we're going to do as a nonprofit? We're going to send you to the next one, yeah. the next nonprofit. Right. right. Right? Because we specialize in this, but guess what? The, the youth may need this. Right, right. So awesome. we'll send them that way. So food, that's a basic mm -hmm. necessity yeah. that a lot of our students and youth don't get, and we want them to act a certain way, be a certain way, but they hungry. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. So we we'll understand that when they walk through our door, what do you need? Right. It's going to be completely different than what you may need. Mm -hmm. So we'll do the case plans. You come in and we figure out who you are, mm -hmm. what mm -hmm. you need, what you're missing. We say like in the staircase, right? You have um, stairs two and three and you want them to get to six, but they're missing four and five. <laughs> yeah. So we will identify that at the Troy Center. Mm -hmm. that they're missing four and five Fill to the get blanks. them to six mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. as opposed to them coming in on one and two and expecting them to get to six, but they're missing four and five. Mm -hmm. Makes sense. So we have to identify that. Right. Yeah. And then we'll help them identify their success vehicle as well. Mm -hmm. And, and that's something that gets them from point A to B. That's awesome. Also too, uh, I'm, I'm open to it. I'm waiting for it. I know Mark is. And also I, I think bringing in, um, role models on the outside that they can see that may look like them because I think a lot of it in these uh, inner cities and these uh, communities they don't really see anyone that looks like them that is successful right. and is doing something positive and not illegal you know what I mean Absolutely. so I think the more they can see that like look this guy looks like me and he's not doing something illegal he's making a great living doing this mm -hmm. maybe I can be that as well so I think that that'll help as well bring it I'm sure you Absolutely. got that on yeah, That's yeah. A plan too, and, and like I said, with with um, Kenny Wiggins coming um, to speak to the youth, and yeah. that's the exposure part of it. Yeah, we want to expose them to these different things to see that no, you can do it too. Sure, right, and give them those exam those tangible examples. Like, hundred percent. Hey, what you came from? Where and you did what? Yes, it's, mm -hmm. it's possible. Like our kids are an hour and a half away from Yosemite, have never been. Mm. Yes, but you got people flying from China. Mm -hmm. just for yep. Yosemite Park. And it's an hour and a half away from here. Yeah. So we want to expose them to things like that. That's, that's amazing, man. Great things, guys. Once again, TroyCenter.org. If you guys just want to support the cause, it's a great cause here in yes, Fresno. Um, you got to 
Yeah, man. Hey, so clearly you're working with a lot of youth. Yeah. Clearly they may or may not have the role models that they need in their mm-hmm. life. Um, do you envision one of these kids coming back to you someday in the future when they've, you know, done well in their business or that's the goal. Uh, Nick, I'm, I'm entering the draft. I mean, Ooh. I mean, when, when this stuff starts to happen, man, how's, how's this going to hit you? This is passion coming full circle. Right. You want to revive the youth and now they're coming back doing something that you may have not even had the opportunity to do when you were younger. Right. What's that? What do you think that's going to feel like, man? What did mean? Man, to be honest, it's crazy. You bring that up. <clears throat> there was a young man at the JJC mm. who has been extremely successful in um, college football. Okay. And <clears throat> I am now in contact with him because I'm no longer at the JJC. Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. It's, it's, so he, it's, it's he, relieving he, to say, you, you know, know what I mean? Actually touch him now. In, exactly. In, so in, in his success life. story is one that I think of when you ask that question. Good. Right. Um, there's there's several youth that we work with daily that I could see coming back and telling their story. Mm. And, and and that's the goal. Mm-hmm. That's the thing, because like I said, credible messengers. Right. I don't know if you're familiar with that term, but that's someone who's been there, done that. Yeah. And a lot of our students, like I'm able to talk to them at their level. But then if you're able to bring someone who's actually not too far removed from you, like that's their peer. Right. It's that much more impactful. Mm -hmm. Right. So we are definitely like looking to the moment and just thinking about that moment when our youth come back and give back to someone who was in their shoes, maybe three, four or five years prior. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So that's definitely a goal and we will get there for sure. And it's just, I don't know. I I can almost get goosebumps thinking about it. Yeah, Yeah, I bet, man. I mean, you're putting in, a lot of work for what what you truly believe in, yes, and, and then when you see uh you know the results come through and and it continues to get better and better every single year with with people you know doing better for themselves and coming back and speaking to the kids that are yeah. still coming through the center, um or in any local, you know I just ran into this morning at the gym was uh, Mark Castro the local friend the boxer okay the boxer uh, he just okay. he's ten and zero yeah he's ten and zero. Um, I tried to get him to go to that conference. Him and I went to the conference two, three years ago to that same one that, that we ran into each other. He was at. there. He, oh, did he show up? He showed up in the beginning. He was actually there when they, um, they had the YouTube sensation. Oh, and, right, right, and right. He right. shouted him out because he was sitting right in the front. No oh, way. Yeah. Okay. He showed up. Yeah. He showed up. Yeah. So I, I had shot him a text and he was like, my, my dad, my dad hangs, uh, he, he's the one that handles all the schedules, man. So, you know, I'll shoot it to him and, and let him know, but Man, he would be a good one too, man. Because yeah, yeah. uh, his, his he's from here. Exactly. Um, doesn't come from you know somewhere. Where he wasn't handed nothing. You know, right. he just worked through the amateurs with it. And um, and a shout out to Mark Castro, man. If shout, you, out. shout out. This yes. is something, man. That that I mean, I know this. I know this is something you like to do. We've yeah. already been at at conferences already, man. Just check out this Choice Center, man. They're doing great 100%. things. Man. I appreciate that. And, and, and next, like we just we just commend your dedication because we've seen it. Me and Mark have seen it. Um, yeah. You guys will eventually, if Definitely. you pay attention. How this dedication and he's just stuck with this and just really building this and it's all just to help out the youth and these kids and it's amazing what the, what he's doing because we don't see this every day you know um, just imagine a world with you know more people are trying to do their part in it but um, once again guys if you guys are looking to volunteer donate yeah. help in any capacity is the website the, the best way to reach you the or best way we're on social media as well got it at the Troy Center on all social media platforms. Um, choicecenter.org for yeah. sure is our website yeah. and yeah man that's how you can reach out to us for sure yeah yeah um, and also too I mean I'm sure you know you just reach out via the website or Instagram or you just you can even hit them up and just see if there's ask a question what is yeah. it that you can do to help right. you know because right. um, it's going to take you know quite a bit of those of us to help out just because we really want to see this thing grow and, and yeah. just be Becoming to fruition and what you're doing, and it's already because it's already real. It's just getting yeah. it bigger and opening it up to more people. So yes, awareness sir. is key right now. Awareness, awareness. Um, yeah, yeah, man. Um, so man, uh, so so let me ask you this, uh, Nick. So, what other things do you have uh, coming up? You got any more events coming up this year? I know you got this. Is the next one, right? Yeah. Fall. Um, any future? just going to go how do you you know so we're looking to get more contracts with our schools because like at violet hines we're in there 
as mentors daily okay. with our students, right? Got it. So we meet with our students um, once a week and then daily as needed in regards to like just getting them to kind of like get back on track or if they just need to talk to someone. Um, so we're looking to get into more schools to be able to do that, mm. right? So we're looking for more contracts. Um, we're doing things over at Steinbeck Elementary where we go out during recess only on Wednesday, right? We go out and we're just there as a figure, helping them run flag football. Mm. Wow! I funny. was told by one of the teachers that they don't allow their students to play flag football because they fight too much. Mm. Mm. I knock on wood when I say this, we haven't had one fight. Wow. And we've been there since October. Sure. And they've seen a drastic decline in disciplinary actions or issues with their students. Wow, that's amazing. So we're looking to get into more schools in that capacity to be, you know, that role model, that that male figure, or even female figure, whatever the case may be, that's delivering that message to where our student, our youth can actually hear it. Mm. and are willing to listen to it because all about we talked about this earlier before the podcast started it's all about delivery mm -hmm. and sometimes there's a disconnect we talked about this earlier right if i needed to get something done at the jjc well i had to go way up here but they're so far removed from the people down here right right but this is where the change needs to be implemented mm -hmm. right so where we come in as a choice and is we're that bridge mm. we're still connected Right. Mm -hmm. So I can go in and talk to a, a young man or lady who's been cussing the teacher out all day. They might cuss me out once or twice, but then when they understand that, no, I'm here to help you, that might change. Yeah. And then once again, that, you know, that barrier is brought down. Yeah. So we want to get into more schools. We look to get more contracts with schools and school districts mm -hmm. to um, implement, you know, our curriculum and, and the things that we're doing to, to better, not just our youth, but the community. Awesome. It's amazing, man. Love it. Love it. Love it, man. Oh, I don't know. You That's got anything good stuff, else to add, man? man. Was, I, yeah. I do have a question, actually. I got a question uh, from from not the business side, not from the, the youth and, and what, you know, they'll be uh, benefiting from from this. But um, maybe, maybe some, I don't know if you guys have plans for this or maybe never, maybe never thought about it or touched on it. But mm -hmm. anything that the Troy Center is going to do or put out or maybe like some curriculum for parents who are interested in maybe – um, what you guys are doing, how my son is listening now. What are you doing? Exactly. You know no, what no, I mean? No. And that's definitely down the, the, the road. Okay. And something, and that's why I want to make sure when I say it's not just for our youth, truly reviving our youth, yes. Mm -hmm. But we want to make sure our parents are involved. Because they're around on the most. Yes. You know what they're I mean? They're around on the most. And, they can and that's where we piggyback and implement the same things. Exactly. It's going to so have a bigger we, effect. We'll bring them on board to where we can have like different sessions and like, you know, interactions with the parents mm -hmm. That's without great, the student at first or the youth at first to where they now they can, you know, kind of think outside the box and how they're doing what they're doing. Mm -hmm. So 100 percent. And once again, I got to give my hat and tip my hat to the JJC. Right. And, and that's something that I picked up on with, you know, parenting classes from, you know, the JJC and seeing how the parents interact. But definitely at the Troy Center, we want to be able to get the parents on board mm -hmm. because, I personally believe a lot of the problems that our students and youth, you know, face stems from home. Yeah. Mm. It starts at home. A yep. lot of, not all, mm -hmm. but I think a lot. Even and if it's not intentional, it's just, it's, it's just not. what the parents know when it comes down to or don't coping know. skills, right. Or what they don't, don't know, know when it comes to, you know, de-escalation when it exactly. comes to financial literacy, anything yes. like financial that is going to come from home. Too. Right. If they don't have, the you know those that skill set yeah. is not going to carry on to the it's child. So, right. so getting on the same page is is obviously going to have a big impact. And a lot of what parents do to do is because of what the way their parents exactly. work towards them, and the pattern cycle. doesn't. Smack yeah, you got my motivational you, quote yeah. by the way. And I just interesting because I told uh, my whole new thinking of parenting has rever has changed over the years. Okay, because I feel like you know we 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 don't have the, all the answers. Right. So no. I think it's, a, it's, we learn from our kids too, right? Believe it or not, we yeah. learn from our kids. True. Absolutely. Uh, a lot of our pride and ego gets in the way as far as parents and, uh, you know, acting like we got to have the final say we can't, yeah. we don't, we don't give them a space to even speak a lot of mm. times, you know, at least this when I true. grew up, you know, like do it. Cause I said, so they're, they're yeah. questioning you like, just cause I said, so do it, but that's not the proper way. We need to listen more. Right. And have that dialogue open it up and understand like, okay, and the more you listen, the more you can figure out better solutions. And Absolutely. at the end of the day, it's going to be 
a win-win and, and just be a way better result. Yeah, like how uh, Nick said, you're going to learn a better way know, to deliver exactly. the message. Because exactly. it might be different in the household. My right. son is going to hear it differently than my daughter. Absolutely. And you're not going to know that until you, you, know, yeah. you, you actually have open dialogue with them instead of telling them, did I tell you to sit there and mm. stay there? Didn't I tell you to sit there and sure. stay there? Mm. Well, I mean, well, dad, I have to, I have to piss, but I'm just going to sit here and stay here because that's what you said. And, yeah. and now there's piss on your couch. Exactly. You know, so, so listen, you got to right. You got to open that up. Wow. Educate. All that goes together. Now the kids and and they're more educated, and they will, and you'll find, I think, the kids will will get it. Yeah. yeah. You know what I mean? Really you just it. talk to them re- like a regular person and open up that Absolutely. dialogue. Let them have their space to open up. Um, you, I, you have less problems with your kid. I, I just, I mean, I'm not no specialist or no, no I but you. I mean, that little bit, I think it can go a long ways. Yes, sir. My opinion. Yeah. I concur. That's awesome, man. Hey, before we get out of here, like we always do, man, I know you like uh, the hip hop. Uh, I always like to ask the guests, the top three hip hop artists that they're like listening to now Paz, it doesn't matter i, I know oh know number one cool. tupac I could argue okay with tupac. <laughs> that's not that's not a debate and a lot of people i will go yeah that's so, in line with a lot of people a lot, a lot of guests people like this. okay who else nip nipsey nipsey hustle okay. definitely changed and la russell oh. la russell's up there great oh la russell's hey, up there already he, i did not t- he moved into my top three as well lately he, yeah like he's uh russell there yeah for there. me for gotcha. sure yeah, did you understand? Did you hear what I said? I said Tupac, Nipsey, and La Russell. That's that's that's, that's so, real. That's, but if you're a real hip hop head or you like music, that. just think about those three people. Forget the music. Mm. Mm-hmm. So that's what resonates with me. Okay. Mm. It okay. ain't just the music. It's yeah. deeper and bigger than that. It's everything. Right? Mm-hmm. It's, and it's... those are my top three. Yeah. Mm. I didn't even know you was going to ask this question, but that's what it is. <laughs> yeah. Tupac, <laughs> Nip. And that's I, that. That's a good I think list. for the first couple of guests, we had kind of told them, "Hey, we might hit you up about you know whatever." Yeah. But after that, we were just like, you know, what? let's just yeah, we're just throw, throwing, we, we're just we want to see on the spot, you know, let's spot. on the spot. On the spot. That was spot. quick too, and, and and you didn't even have to think. Like most people, like myself too, sometimes like, oh, this is always the hardest for me. Yeah, yeah. But Tupac uh, is but always boom, my you're... top. Boom, boom, boom. Um, and, but that makes sense because it's beyond the music. It's beyond. So you're, it's beyond the music. It's beyond the music. Okay. Yeah, Nipsey's up there, and it's a message in the music that if you listen to it. Yeah, it's the message. Everything they're you know the movement. It's it's right. what they're what they're their mindset. What 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 they're about. So I get it. Yes, yeah. sir. Man, I don't right. know if you got it. Man, it, it's true. It's it was a great show, man. Blessing, I, it's man. It's been man. nice having you here. Appreciate you. Know, um, like For I real. said, you, it's so needed. I love this sweater, guys. You guys like this sweater? It's, I love you. The got, color. You got more of that like, already made. Uh, like like Nick, how you got different. So colors? we could like, we could definitely get you some more and just a real look. We are in the process of rebranding right now. Okay. Oh. So that's going to be. So we might be on hold well, for a little while. No, no, no. But this is a, this is exactly. Yeah, I got, I got, I got it. Okay. That's going to be like the, you know, the throwback. Yeah. Well, I might have to just frame this and not wear it no more because yeah, it's going to yeah. be like, you know, 20 years from now. Like, hey, I got the original <laughs> logo. <laughs> but we definitely can get you more of that if you need it. Oh, sure. yeah. I'll definitely, you know, I'll, I'll go in there and donate. I mean, I just, like I said. And you have. Want... Not that you. Oh, well, yeah. I have. mean, I don't. Not, we appreciate it. For sure. Yeah. I, I just, you know, it, like I said, it's it's, it's an amazing cause. Uh, it's you, needed. It's Thank and you. everything. I know you, how you are. You're you're completely 100% invested in this. Um, Absolutely. So, I mean, it just. You know, Marcus spoke a lot about it as well. And that's yeah, you got the right guy at the at, at the head, man. You know, the right guy at the head. Make sure, guys, if you don't do anything, at least check out. Follow them on Instagram. Very least. Follow him. Troy Center. What is it? Troy Center? The Troy Center. The Troy Center on Instagram. Um, Just start there, you know, and just see all the amazing things he's doing. And if you want to donate, great. But again, just it's a, it's an amazing cause. I mean, there's nothing. Thank you, with, man. Uh, and I think you've said before in a video. Uh, a lot of times uh, donating uh, people automatically jump to money. money. Right. Not, yeah. And and one of you, and I love that. I think I shared that video once or twice. That's what's up. You know, you, you mentioned, you know, we're, we're looking for, for donations in time, time. donations, right. energy, donations of resources. That's donations. Not about money. Just, to our kids. just come and talk, come and hang out, you know, that's just, it. Like, so, I mean, it's, it, that's, man, it's wild. It's wild what you're doing. And, thanks. and uh, it's, it's, it's needed. And I, uh, I can't wait to see it grow, man. Heck yeah. Heck yeah. We're gonna we're gonna have you back too again. Yeah, man. yeah let's do it. It's gonna be next time. This this I'm gonna put it out there. Next time we come back, you're gonna have the building. You're gonna be that up and part. running, and we're that gonna talk part. about how that building looks and get the address to everybody. We can do the up. podcast in Check the, the building. Wow. I that, like that. That's what we're gonna do. So we're gonna like do, we're gonna do the yeah. podcast next podcast with with Nick. We're gonna be at the. It might be so big though. He's gonna charge us for for a podcast episode. I don't know. I don't know. This is good. Go Hollywood. Never that. Never that. Never that. Yeah, I would never see that. Well, hey, 
thanks for, for for joining us, man. We appreciate it. You're all your family here, man. So Thank anytime you. you want to come aboard. Absolutely, absolutely. Before we get out of here, we got a motiv- let me do, we got a let me do my motivational Let's quote go. here. And uh, it ties in perfect. That's what I try to do, typically tie it in with with you know what we're talking about. Um, so this motivational quote is generational curses are broken mm. by one decision by one person. You wow. know, that's all it takes. Wow. Right? Jeez, if you're deep. gonna be that one person coming to the Troy Center, uh a, a product of the Troy Center, mm. a mentor at the Troy Center, uh, or or any capacity, yeah, making that decision to say we are no longer gonna live this way mm. going forward mm. will change the entire trajectory Jeez. of all of your people that you've never even met yet for the rest of their lives. I love it. And that's all it takes. One decision from one person in a family. To break gener- generation and, and what's needed in those decisions is to get rid of the ego or pride. Oh yeah. Mm. Once Open you, that mind once up. you get rid of that, which the Bible talks that you don't want to even have, God hates pride and ego. Once you release that, you'll open yourself up more yes, to sir. do to answers and learning exactly, and growth and to yeah. learn, to grow, and to Absolutely. apply what you learn. So I love, love it. Love That's that. it. That's it. Wow, this has been a hot. This has been a great show, man. I appreciate you, man. Great show, thank you, Nick. Man. Thanks for coming out. For coming coming out, man. Another good and one. Another, another good one. great show, guys. Check out the Heat Speakers, all the podcasts, YouTube. We're gonna see you again next week. Uh, just keep supporting, support everything. That's right. Thank you college. for tuning in. Check out the other ones. We've got guests on most of them there, and they're all bringing that fire content. So, yes, sir. Uh, check in, keep tuning in, and we'll have more coming. Oh, before we go. Check out, we got a special Heat Speakers uh, first time buyers webinar. We do. So check that out mm-hmm. for anyone, even just not too familiar with the buying process. You can. We got a video coming out very soon if it's not out already. Uh, very as, thorough. Very thorough. Breaks very. down each step, eases some of that uh, intimidation you may feel getting into this process to buying a home. Yes. Very um, you know, so it's definitely very beneficial. And uh, you guys need to check it out. That's it, guys. Have a great one. All right. Till next time. One love. <laughs>